The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Gaza Traffic sitting in. Tommy O'Brien not able to make it this morning, and it's my pleasure to be able to fill in. Let's get right to the market. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do the kind of work that Tommy does. He, he really he does a fantastic job of putting together the fundamentals together with the technicals. I'll do my best right now. We've got a Dow that had a, a really an amazing session yesterday. At one point, it was up 500. And then what happened is after the Fed came out and kind of put a damper on it, the market completely reversed, went down over 200 points, and then closed down at 34,168. You can see what happened overnight for anyone who was looking at the futures overnight. That was incredible. The Dow futures plunged uh, to the, uh, let's see, what have we got here? The low last night was 33,532. We're trading at 34,200 right now. That is quite a move. And what's really important about these four candles, I'll talk about that in, in a moment, but I'm going to say is that there's 200 period exponential moving average right there. Look at the way it's been resistance. If the Dow is able to trade and close nicely, any day, it doesn't have to be two days in a row, just one day sharply above going into the top of the candle towards the nine period exponential moving average of 34,591, I think that'll be say, Finally, we've got the volatility index, and I, you know, I heard Tommy yesterday talking about the, the volatility index, the VIX index, which is down at 29.32, down 2.64 after just four days ago, hitting 38.94. That 38.94 is, in fact, since the week of no, since October of 2020, where it hit 41.16. That is the highest level that the volatility index has been at. So I'm saying that the emotional sentiment from the December 1st low in the market, where uh, on the third, that was the 1st of December, on the third, the VIX index went to 3532. That was like an internal low. Now we're seeing something like an internal high in the market, internal low in the in, internal low in the market, internal high in the VIX. Now we've got a residual high, and we'll see what happens because this kind of volatility looks like um, until you know. I always think of if you take a knife and you've got you've got a table and you put the knife flat with the handle of the knife sticking out, and you go. Doing. We used to do this to drive my parents nuts at the, at the dinner table. And you'd have the, the knife going, doing, and then it finally the oscillation just fizzles out and it stops oscillating. Well, that's what we're going to see. Are we getting the oscillation here where this is the high 38.94 in the VIX and the low yesterday of 27, was it 27.20 or something? Uh, 26.90 gets taken out and we start to subside. That's going to be really impressive. So let's go on. We've got the uh, YM, which is the Dow Futures, trading up 164. As I say, it had a low this morning of 33,532. That is 700. I mean, that is really big. But we've seen that every day now. How does it sustain the move? We'll talk about that as we move through the show. Look at the E-mini, the continuous contract of the E-mini. The ES is at the high of the day, up 36 points at 4378. Uh, had a low this morning of 4263. These are numbers that we used to see over a period of a couple of days. We're seeing them now within hours. And normally that that the, 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 the vicissitude of the market, that that high volatility, it starts to calm down, and we need to see it calm down, and we need to see a trend. The trend so far is saying, even in the E-mini, that 200-period moving average, which you just touched today at 4381, 
um, we're going to see. Does we, do we see a market that all of a sudden people say, you know what, the Fed always manages to say something that the market is fearing but then doesn't necessarily act in, in the concerted way that the market thinks it's going to do. So, and then the market is, at some point just gets used to the fact that in this case, they're going to be high interest rates. That's the way it looks, all right? So how soon does the market take that as the de facto situation? Now let's deal with it. And our reason why I wanted to do that before I went to the next index was to set up the stage to say, wait a minute, the NQ, that's the, um, that is the E-mini NASDAQ 100 continuous contract is trading up 155 and 14,313. Let's go to the QQQ, the NDX 100. I look at that horrible red candle yesterday and it closed at 344 and here we are five points higher. That's going to be really important because we want to see, are, are we about to, uh, just as, as, as an example, let's go to the ARKK, which is Kathy Wood, uh, it's Wood's um, uh, ARK Innovation ETF. And that really, I think, is going to tell us about that whole sector of the NASDAQ type stocks. These are the more uh, innovative companies, uh, but most importantly, these are the ones that she was buying all the way down. And I suspect that we're getting to a point where she's been just hammered and hammered and hammered by every every media and it, it's about time that she had a little bit of success. And I think that this is the time we're going to see it. If the ARC Index, uh, ARC Innovation ETF, is able at any point in the next week, going to the first part of the first week, of the Monday, Tuesday is the first, correct, Tuesday is the first of February. If by Friday of next week, in other words, a week from tomorrow, if we see the ARC index up in the, at the 78 level, it's at 69. That's a lot to ask. But if it's up at 78 or higher, that is suggesting to me that we're finally seeing buying coming in to that really important sector, that whole area of the NDX 100, or in this case, Kathy Wood's ARC Innovation ETF. And we will see a more concerted effort because what will happen then is maybe the Dow could take a bit of a breather as uh, the um, formerly very weak stocks. And here again, I'm just going to use this as an example. It's not It's not what I'm I, – we are trading at all. But say a DocuSign at 160.90 up 2.65 up this morning after making a low – two days ago of 108 after being at 314 back in August. I would say that that's a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a decline. All right. So what we're looking at here is that's the one sector, the IWM, the Russell 2000. This is kind of in the same uh, sector of weakness, but it's a different kettle of fish because this is the small cap, the Russell 2000 ETF. They're in their own uh, universe. They, they have financials. They have oil stocks. They have a lot. And yet they've been beaten down. When do they come back in the sectors that uh, will become favorable again? And that's going to be the big question because uh, we need to see that trading the 206s more than the 197. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Hi, folks. We're back, and it's my play. I'm sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. Of course, it's not the same thing. I'm doing my best. Basil Chapman here, and we are going to go to Kevin Hinks. Kevin, how are you? I haven't spoken to you for a long time. Nice to talk to you, Basil. It's, no. it's good to talk to you after such a monumental day in stocks and bonds yesterday, and pretty incredible turn of events that we had yesterday. And, Basil, I don't know about you, but that was, I don't know if it was Jerome Powell's finest hour, but boy, he gave out a lot of information yesterday. And, and I think the market sold off yesterday, Basil, out of pure confusion with some of the message. I mean, he said they're ready to raise rates, but he also said that inflation is going to come down throughout the year. He said they're ready to raise rates, but he also said incoming data and evolving outlook will measure what they do. Speculators are, are jumping to three and four and five uh, rate hikes when I, I, I don't think it'll be near that many. And some people are calling for a half-point raise, which I think there's zero chance of that happening. But I think the good news that your viewers can take from yesterday, the Fed has begun to extract themselves from the bond and note market and turn it back into a pure trading vehicle with just supply and demand. And I think that long term is extremely healthy for the overall market. So, Kevin, when you say that, I, I have to kind of chuckle to myself because for a long time I've been saying if the market is doing this well, if the earnings a lot of companies have had really fantastic earnings. Wouldn't the normal thing under for, for us having been in markets for a long time, wouldn't the natural uh, situation be that the demand for uh, loans would increase and that normally would say yields should go a little higher? Isn't that the way it normally works? Yes. Yeah. In, in a normal situation with supply and demand, that is the way it would work, right? Commodities and bonds and things like this, they should all be self-correcting, right? Correct. They should all right. move based on supply and demand. And and the bond and the bond market artificially um, priced higher and yields lower by the Fed's intervention is what kept those rates at those levels, just like you can connect the dots 
to the crude oil market and what OPEC and OPEC Plus is doing to the crude oil market. Where would crude oil be if OPEC wasn't controlling supply? Where would interest rates be if the Fed wasn't, you know, um, buying assets? Both those questions are billion and trillion dollar uh, questions, Basil, but they affect stocks and they affect inflation and they affect all these things. But yeah, you're right, Basil. I mean, where would these all these things be if people weren't intervening in them? Well, which said to me for a long time, if the Fed had actually just allowed the gen the, the real market uh, b b buying and selling to take place, they would not necessarily have had to pump as much money. In fact, it might have taken a little longer to reach this level in the market um, but it would have been done under more natural circumstances. So the, I think the market is trying to adjust to what will happen when the modus operandi changes somewhat. And that's kind of where we are, isn't it? Yes, and I believe that, you know, Jerome Powell believes, and if you read Milton Friedman, he believed in a theory called the fool in the shower for um, monetary policy. And that is, when you get in the shower and it's cold, you turn it all the way to hot as fast as you can, and a few minutes later, you're scalding yourself. Milton Friedman always thought that slow, incremental changes in monetary policy were the best way to move rates. And I think Jerome Powell is afraid of scaring the markets, and he doesn't want that on his resume. So I think even though he talks about raising rates, I still think it'll be a slow methodical pace that he'll raise them. Right. So um, in your program today, what will you be discussing? I know the fabulous program and options. So what, what's what's on the agenda? Well, uh, the, the great news is days like this, the, the shows write themselves, Basil, because we get to talk about Apple, right? We get to Apple's got earnings after the bell today. Visa has earnings after the bell today. Uh, and we'll probably talk about because it's, they're so important. Caterpillar today that has oh. earnings tomorrow morning before the open. So Apple, Visa, and Caterpillar touching all different parts of the U.S. And, economy. And we'll see what happens because you, you might get two doing one thing, one doing another. Uh, it's going to be very interesting how the market adjusts itself by the close tomorrow Friday with those three very important stocks. So that should be a fantastic program. Looking forward to it. Wow. Uh, because Caterpillar is telling us about uh, really more infrastructure, sure. about uh, it's got uh, the commodities, it's got a lot of things in it. So that, yeah, oh, oh, that should be fabulous. And Visa, if you use American Express, although they're slightly different companies, look what happened to American Express and Visa's chart pattern looks like American Express was at the low three days ago. So we'll see how that responds. Yeah, I think you're touching a lot of parts of the U.S. economy. You mentioned infrastructure spending and, you know, should affect Caterpillar. The payment space, Visa, so important to not just the payment space, but overall health of the economy, right? There's more swipes of those cards, Basil, in a healthy U.S. economy than a slow one. So any COVID problems may be affecting Visa in this quarter. And then, of course, the behemoth. That is Apple, which touches all parts of the U.S. economy. We'll cover which that also, as well. Which also has the semiconductor, the chips uh, situation there. I wonder what they're going to say to that effect. Sure. I mean, supply chain constraints and semiconductor shortages have to slightly be affecting Apple. But then again, some, how, much, how much of the semiconductors that they use do they make themselves now? So are they overly affected? By that, if you don't have to rely on, uh, so on on someone to provide those for you, so yeah, it'll be interesting. Apple always a fascinating um, look into the economy, as you know. Th Apple touches all parts of some people's lives. I'm sitting at a desk right now. I've got one, two, three, four, five Apple products sitting in front of me, Basil. Uh, you know, it was incredible the way they 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 turned a uh, commodity. Uh, into uh, the, the fact that they didn't open use open structure or open uh, open sourcing, uh, and, they, and they kept it all contained. How they've built this product into such an important—it's uh, a self-contained product. It's just incredible. Yeah, I, 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 you know, Apple is amazing, and what they're doing now 
the evolution of this company, which is to bring really to phase out suppliers and make now make their own chips and make their own parts for the iPhone. It's like they have so much money that they don't know what to do with. They're starting to work on the supply chain for them. Because really, if you think about it, with, they, with all the demand they have, the only thing that can affect this company might be the supply chain and the overall health of the economy. That, that, was, that was my point, so we'll see, because it's going to be important about what they say their outlook is going to be. Yeah. Of course. So that should be a wonderful program. Folks, if you have a chance, listen to, to uh, this is Kevin uh, Think or Swim. It's uh, at, at it's uh, what is it's at uh, twelve o'clock, right? Noon Eastern time. Have a yes, great sir. day. Great to speak with you, Kevin. Thanks, Basil. Have a great day. You too. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back. This is Basil Chapman. I usually do the hour after this, the 10 o'clock hour Eastern time. The, uh, the opening call is my daily newsletter. And uh, the uh, Tiger Technician's Hour is my show. And I'm doing Tommy's show. This is Market Kickoff. Kick off. Look at the dollar, the way it kicked off. It broke out of the 9690 uh, area. It's in the 97s in leg C in the Chapman Wave methodology. We should go to four higher peaks based on the buy mode, which should take you to a leg D. Uh, and a leg D in the weekly chart, I had drawn this, I should mention this for subscribers, real long from April of, nine, of 2018. Oh, there's a lot of activity going on. 
I'm beginning a little, I'm a little slow. It's very, very unusual for that to happen. Um, oh, very slow, actually. Um, so we're looking at 97.13 on the dollar. I want you to show you the cup formation and the breakout to that, that candle, the very ugly candle, around about July, August of 2020. Um, and we're in leg C in the monthly chart. That's really good. So am I able to access anything here? Whoa, that is really unusual. Um, no, 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 no. We don't want to see that. Okay, here it comes. Everything's coming back. Ooh, okay, we're moving to the right. Just wanted to show that cup formation. I'm going to grab this. That is really, you know, in fact, I probably should have closed and restarted this computer earlier on, but I just a sudden moment where I was asked if I could sit in for this hour, and I didn't have a chance to do that. All right, so what we're looking at here, let's just get to all the nitty-gritties. We've got the Dow up $300 at 34474 That is really important. One of the reasons why hmm, – I can't even type in there. I can talk about it. All right, it it'll get there. Just uh, a little – there we are, a little bloated energy for that opening salvo. The Dow is up 305 Oh, everything's moving now. Okay, all right. Do what you have to do. The Dow's up 318, 320 right now at 34,450. The S&P's up 48 points at 43.98. I can type that in. Let me just show you now. I think it's better to see it with the charts. There we go. So we're looking at the Dow. When underneath that trend line um, this week, this is the weekly chart. You see that trend line that I drew? So it's not a channel because it's an expanding channel. So this is called the Chaffin Wave Inside Track. Uh, was a propellant zone. Now it's a repellent zone. Does it go back above it? Does it go back into the 34,700s to say, hey, whew, I'm free of the 30, 33,700s, and we'll see what happens then. I think I can move this. And just for subscribers, I should just mention, uh, there, was, there was a brief moment where the, the new entry that we wanted on the long position today uh, did go under. It was a good opportunity to get in there. Well, it was right at about the price that I wanted. You should be long the position that we wanted. And, uh, oh, everything's slowing down. That, that, how embarrassing is that? Yeah, you are ready to ride and your horse doesn't want to get to the starting gate. Uh, let's do it again. Okay, so we've got the Dow up 331 and 34,508 right at that 200 period exponential moving average. Now, what I was talking about earlier on was will we see today, will there be new buying coming in to those ARKK, that's the ARK Innovation Index? I'm just using this as a, it's just a nice example to use because it, it takes in all those stocks that were fantastic winners in 2021 and then just start to tumble to, to lows 30, 40, some, some were even more than 50% below the previous high. And we'll see if that's going to happen because what I want to do now, if I'm able to, I'm typing over there. Don't want to waste any time. I need the time because there's so much to do, even though I've got my own show coming up straight after this. All right, here's the QQQ. Look at this. It's up uh, 3.93. This big red candle, it's going to be so important for the overall market. Remember, I was talking about to Kevin Hinks uh, a moment ago, and we were talking about yeah, how does the market uh, resolve what's going on with the Fed, the kind of normalization that we, we're anticipating. Well, we will see what happens because if the rotation continues to unfavor the NDX 100 or the QQQ or the stocks that are – uh, in that whole area of tech, then any rally is just momentary. And then all that we're going to do is have to look at what else is working, what's under the radar, where are we, what, what's happening with crude oil, what's happening in uh, the bonds. I had a question about a recession. Well, let's let's go to the TNX.X, which is the 10-year, if I can type it and get it, I've got it. Will the price come up, please? Now, this kind of buying says to me that the general public are really flocking towards the market because we've got the kind of delay. You know, some of us remember years ago, we used to, 
any moment during the day, you'd get uh, everything slowing down because so many people were going on to going on the internet and it would slow everything down. Um, we're kind of getting that the last couple of days with the incredible action in the markets. Oh, don't do that. Hopefully, I'll have a chance to restart my computer because this is, uh, you know, you're just sitting here. It's like it's beyond your capacity now. You you just a spectator. I don't like that, but I'm going to thank uh, Dave White for flashing in the den a bunch of things. You've got Tesla down 3.26% at 906 LRCX. Now, this is in the semiconductor area, and this is the reason why I'm saying still be quite cautious because it's so selective here. You've got the semiconductor index, the SMHs. I can see I've got all the numbers are working. I just can't change the site. It's at 267. It's down a little bit. Semiconductor should be leading the way to the upside and it's not but you and you have love which is uh, the airline the airline the airline um love is love is for the very young um, luv is one of the airlines and i forget for the life of me i'm now forgetting the name it's down at 1.26 percent at 43.16 mcdonald's is down uh, lvs uh, las vegas sands are down uh this is very interesting CL is that Clorox? I think no. CL is up a dollar twenty-two. Uh, no, one point two two percent. You've got Mo. This is the defensive area. Philip Morris uh, Blue is Jet Blue. Interesting. Oh, I think I'm very. No, I'm not. What is going on? Hello, anybody home? Control R. What's the point of subbing for someone today if you're unable? to do anything about it. All right, so you've got uh, BX. Now, this is going to be really interesting. That's the Blackstone Group. Uh, BX is up 5.63% at 117.75. I'm going to have to say that if the Blackstone Group can really push into the 124 to 128 area over the next two weeks, I think that's going to be important. That's in the financial sector. I don't believe this. I've, I, 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 have for, for, I haven't I have installed like this on my computer for I don't know how long because it has to be today. I don't know what's going on here. Click, click. I'm just clicking away. <laughs> the clicks, the clicks are not mattering at all. I can't even change my... Uh, can I? Nope. It's got that vertical line. All right. Well, I don't want to slow things down. What I did want to say, the TL... I'm going to move over this way. The TLT which is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund is at 2.39. It's at 142. And that says that yields are coming down. Therefore, we also have to look at the, the, the bank index. Well, Bank of America is up 37 cents at 46.27. All I can say is we're going to have to see how the, the close today unfolds because we've got a very mixed market. How Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. 22. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Data White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm most back. Basil Jaffa sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. Uh... We've got a chance now to get everything back again. Let me see if I can do this. TNX.X. We want to get this. Come on. No. Now, I'm just wondering if it's not Trade Station because I closed down a whole bunch of things and maybe they are slow today. I don't know. Uh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, we go. So the TNX trading at 18.10, uh, 1.80%. 1 is up near the highs. I want to see if I can switch to the TLT for now. So the question came up, what about a recession? So I suspect that maybe, I like to talk about mini recessions and rotational recessions. I would say that there's been a recession in tech. But there has been a recession in tech, while other areas, defensive, as in, say, the Procter & Gamble area, which normally would be rallying sharply, trading it up to at 160, would, which would normally be trading much, much higher when the market was in a recession, when the general market was in a recession, you would go to, you'd see the defensive stocks. That's why I've been saying that it sounds funny to say this is different now because everyone says, oh, yeah, it's always different. No, this is different because this market has seen the strangest things. Look at the dollar. So I'm saying the defensive stocks like a Procter & Gamble are near all-time highs. While the general market only now has just started a, a pretty decent eight to eight ten percent correction, but they've been going to highs for a long time. But look at the um, the dollar. The dollar is now. I might, yep, there it is. Dollar coming up, folks. Here it comes the dollar is trading. It's broken out um, of the of the recent rectangle formation to the upside. Does it come back into the middle, into the 96 area? Well, that's going to be the big question because as we're looking at it right now, 97.13 up 60 cents. You've that means you've got gold, gold pulling back, pulling back 22 percent. 1809 just made a, a recent recovery high in the 1858 area just three days ago. Here it is at 1800. That's one of the bigger moves to the downside in the shortest period of time. But if you're looking at the weekly chart, it's just in the rectangle. It's just holding okay. It's not breaking down. If you're looking at, uh, uh, I want you to go to the EUR, USD. The, so going to the recession part of it, look at the euro, the way it's pulling back. It's underneath all the recent lows. So this is a very important moment. That's why I'm saying things are rather different. And what we are looking at here is that within the context of the trading veracity, that is holding uh, the long side or the short side. Look at this. So now we've got a really nice candle up 441 points at 34,594 in, um, in the Dow. Now it's above the 200 period moving average. And what I want you to say is, talking about 
I don't believe re- the traditional recession type action is, is is unfolding at this particular point. We, we've seen it in a rotational way. I would say the tech sector, the XLK, is maybe not a great example of it, but it is an example of um, a move from 28th of December at 177 to the 146 low uh, four days ago of some rotational recession. So if you're talking about a recession in the traditional way, no. But if you're talking about a slowdown in a sector, that is what we've been looking at. And that has continued. And we're looking at it right now with it only up to right on the 100, on the um, 200 period exponential moving average. So I'm saying and that's what I'm going to be doing on Saturday in my, my, my usual weekly overview for subscribers to my opening call. Um, I'm going to be looking at chart formations, what's happening, how the ro- rotation, the rolling rotation that we've had is working and what could be in the, in the cards. Why are we looking at a caterpillar? Yes, earnings are coming out. A caterpillar... Uh, kind of way off the, the high of the 240s that was made back in uh, 2021, slumping down to the 180s, running back to 230, and now in the middle of the range of 216. Is this telling us about infrastructure um, still on the back burner and on the, on the front burner? That's going to be really important. And um, so don't forget, I'm sitting in for Tommy O'Brien right now. I'll be doing my regular show coming up in the next hour. I, I might be sending off a, a, a quick uh, email to uh, a, a post to my subscribers. We have had uh, certain situations here that are very interesting because, look, crude oil is up at uh, a new recovery high. It's gone above the 85.65 October 2018 high that slumped down to the seven dollars and 61 cents in april um, of 2020 and now it is trading at 60 at 88.12 this is a really good move there's a stock we had and we may took a little profit and then it just kept on going to that leg d because that peak c was such a sharp pullback this is mro marathon oil fabulous move up today up 90 cents at 20.50 Above the left side, right side price time match to get to the 18.93 high of 2019. Uh, uh, that was somewhere around May or so. And look at this, very good action. We're looking at, uh, what's the other one I want to look at here? Um, oh, CVX. Let me just go to CVX. Look at this. That has that made a peak C just like MRO. And look at this whopping leg D. Um, and it's trading at 135, up 272. If you're looking at this rotation, that's the thing that I've been talking about. You saw telephone <clears throat> T uh, trading at the uh, over the 200 period moving average in the 27s, and now it's down to the 24 level. And that's the reason why I've been saying for dividend stocks, I'm really afraid of the telecom area, which was used to be the traditional way. When market gets shaky, Money flows from the stocks to bonds. It hasn't happened this time. This is the first time I don't recall that it's happened uh, like this in a long time where the fear factor, where the volatility of key stocks, that means going down volatility. When you say in the market volatility, it usually means down. Um, didn't see money flow into bonds. This is this is a little different. A whole bunch of things are going on right now. So at 142.88, you've got... The um, TLT up 235, that means yields are pulling back just a little bit. Most importantly, you do have, I want you to look at, say, like as a McDonald's. McDonald's is in the defensive area usually, and look what it's done. It's gone from 271 down to 245 today. So the traditional way of looking at the market is, is not the way it's unfolding at this particular time. And therefore, for subscribers on Saturday, I'm going to do a show that really talks about patterns, what we're looking at, how we might be rotating. So the answer to the question that did about recession is that I'm saying because there's a rotational recession that's been going on for quite some time, I don't think the traditional recession is going to be coming in, not at this phase. That's number one. Number two, when we're looking at where markets go, 
if the financials aren't breaking down and the XLF is up today, up at 39.32, is that the end of the show or is this the break? Oh, this is the final break before this, the, the penultimate break before the end of the show. So I'll be back in a moment. Dow's at 555, S&P 72. Two very, very good action. I'll be back in a moment. That's a chat for sitting for Tommy O'Brien, the CEO. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, this is the market kickoff. Of course, I can't do the fundies and technies and technicals at the same time as well as he does, but I'm doing my best. We're looking at the Dow up 569 points. Filling in that candle from yesterday, that wick at the top, trying to get to the, the nine period exponential moving average. This is this is more than a relief rally. I think this is saying to me that that VIX index, which must be much lower now, much lower than it was earlier. Yep, there it is down to 2854 level, down 3.42 at 28.54. This is saying, at least in the short term, these candles, it's... It's actually a day delayed normally on this third day after the low. Um, you would see something really spectacular. So I'm just saying it's the day is young. We're not even a half, we're not even a half an hour into the into the session. So let's see where this closes out because the selling, it's really important that the selling Last night, you know, that from the, the, the 500 point move up in the Dow yesterday to closing down sharply and then following last night with the S&P down 65 or more points. Uh, and now what we're looking at, the S&P, the futures are up um, 
67. So this is a big turnaround, but you have to see so that it isn't a select move. You have to see the QQQ. This is not great action. Up 5.82 at 350.50, and that makes it very select. And that's the reason why I decided that this coming Saturday for my overview um, for subscribers, I'm going to talk about the disparity between all the different sectors and how that crude oil is more a political situation than a technical situation. That's crude oil right now up. If I can get that, there it is. Uh, up uh, 53 at 87.88, having gone above the October 2018 high. But this is a monthly chart. We'll see where it closes come um, Monday afternoon at 4, the last day of January. So we're looking to see what happens here. There are a couple of things that are going on right now in this first half hour. First of all, it's all those people that went short yesterday and thought, oh, yeah, this is it. This is the big one. Uh, this is the crash coming. Uh, I don't see a crash. I see a base building, and that's really important. And I'll talk about that in my show coming up. The opening call straight off. This is, is the, this is the uh, market kickoff. Tommy O'Brien usually does this. I, I might have to sit in for him again tomorrow at this time. But most importantly, he does a fantastic job. I can't do the fundies like he does, all those fundamentals. Trying to put it together technically, 